Oh, it is. It's Madame Ping. Master! No. <laughs> Hello, Shugling. I did not expect that. Nope, I did not either. Master, how are you keeping these days? Are you well? Oh, very well, thank you. What a surprise it is that you all had the time to come and visit me today. Hi. Hello. Master, we came here because we have a question for you. Do you know about the stove god? Of course I know the stove god. Does this mean you know them personally? Ah, I see. It's the Moon Chase Festival, isn't it? How interesting. <laughs> so you came to hear some stories about the Stove God. That's right. We're investigating something that happened recently. I see. The Great Stone Surfaces. <laughs> and so you open an investigation. <laughs> I must commend your guesswork this far. I did indeed know the stove god of whom you speak, but it was a great many years ago. <laughs> Moonchase was originally a rite observed by the Adepti, not something in which the ordinary people of Liyue would ever partake. But over the years, they have sought to emulate it for themselves many times giving rise to various festivals bearing the Moon Chase name. On nights when the moon shone bright, everybody would get together for joyful reunions. There would be fine food, fine wines, and choice teas. Later, Rex Lapis unified all of these various festivals under the Moon Chase name to honor an old friend of his. In short, the heavens were our witness as we vowed to the moon to come together in joyful solidarity, to remember the past and reflect upon the present. That is the meaning of the Moon Chase Festival. Rex Lapis. <sighs> <laughs> that friend made many contributions to Liyue, and Rex Lapis would not have them go unrecognized. Turning this season into a commemoration of his old friend was also a way to honor that friendship. I can only presume that the Stove God Festival was one of the many subsumed into the Moon Chase Festival. In the hands of Rex Lapis, our nation's traditions were faithfully upheld. It is to their detriment that we must now be the ones to inherit this duty. Catching. Someone should really tell you that he's still around, but at the same time, maybe we shouldn't. <laughs> Just to keep his identity safe. Ah, oh, Kuching, I simply won't allow you to be so down on yourself. Nothing would delight Rex Lapis more than to know that those who follow in his footsteps continue to value these traditions and are working tirelessly to do them justice. Thank you. Lady Kuching! Koba, what are you doing? Huh? Lady Kuching, Lady Ningguang wishes to speak with you. Ningguang's looking for me? Must be important. Please excuse me, everyone. If I'm not back soon, you'll find me at Ningguang's office. There she goes. Hmm. Kuching's a lot more serious when she's got her work face on. Do you want to know who Rex Lapis's friend was? Is it Guizhong? Oh, oh! Hi, my guys! I have a feeling it's not Guizhong, but I want to hear about Guizhong. Yes, precisely. There are few genuine coincidences in the world. The story of the Lost Festival and the old friend are indeed one and the same. The Stove God was a good friend of mine, too. <sighs> What a pity it is that the god is now gone both from the world and from people's memories. Oh, How could that happen? It is to everyone's regret that the stove god passed. But gods cannot be fully destroyed, and 
We made a pact to wait until the land became fruitful once more. For perhaps the stove god would then return. Albeit in a new form. Really? Master, you must miss the stove god a lot, right? From the way you talk about it all, it sounds like you're the best of friends. Yes. Thinking back on it all, there are many fond memories. I'm pleasantly surprised to find that Kuching is investigating this. She is a tenacious child, and anything she sets her mind to, she will diligently pursue. It warms my heart and makes me want to give her a helping hand. Unfortunately, however, I cannot simply give her the answer, for the process is of great importance to her. No. Oh. You're gonna make her go through some character development before you help out, huh? Kuching's grandfather once researched the stove god, and now she follows in his footsteps. Since Kuching has inherited this conundrum, so too she must inherit the journey to its resolution. You knew Kuching's grandpa? Of course! I count all the people of Liyue among my good friends. I remember when he was the same age as Kuching is now. <laughs> ah, so young. Does Paimon not know that Madame Ping is very old? Very, very old. Grandparent and grandchild are definitely made from the same mold. Both diligent enough to take on anything and bold enough to see it through to the end. I like to think of Lyre as my own little potted plant. I watched it grow and blossom, and it grows more beautiful all the time. In the blink of an eye, the buds of yesterday are in full bloom today. <laughs> it's wonderful to see. For new blossoms must bloom on the branches if the tree is to remain evergreen and ever young. My dears, you are absolutely right to focus your investigation on the stone. It is, as you suppose, the lost statue of the stove god. And within it lie all the answers that you seek. I should like to see the stone for myself if you would lead me to it. Perhaps the truth will emerge even as we watch on. Oh, you haven't sprouted yet. You're all here. I was just about to send someone to fetch you. Kuching, has the stone undergone any changes? A crack has appeared in one corner, but we still can't tell what's inside. What happened? Did someone chip it while no one else was looking? More likely a natural occurrence. Our weapons have had no effect on it. Is this an egg? That'd be cool. Is baby new stove god inside? That'd be even cooler. How would a natural occurrence crack it open? It's an egg! This is because the stove god draws power from the actions of the masses. The heat of a busy kitchen. The joy of a reunion. <laughs> Keep up the good work, and the truth will rise to the surface soon enough. All the books say the stove god is the deity of food. So is the stone opening up because everyone's cooking for the festival? Hmm. Statues draw power from their people. So, if the stove god has dominion over cooking, could it be that the passion people put into their cooking gives power to the stove god? Ningguang and I chose Feast of the Bounteous Land as this year's theme, and now every chef signed up for the competition is busy preparing. Paimon's theory is not an unreasonable one. Plus, a lot of families have reunion feasts around this time. With everyone back home, the whole city's bustling with people, and that adds a lot to the festive atmosphere. So if the stone cracked because Leo has started getting festive, that must mean that when the festive fever peaks, it'll bust right open, right? That's gotta be it. Right, Master? <laughs> well, we'll have to see then, won't we? 
Okay, the fact that cooking is involved gives us a perfect opportunity. The selections phase of Masterful Chefs will be held indoors and seen by only a few people. But the finals will be held outside in public. Everyone who wants to will be able to come and watch it. The atmosphere will be incredibly lively, no question. And when the finals end, boom! We'll get to see who the snow god really is, right? Let's hope. It's definitely a possibility. Well, I've already signed up, so I should be able to help. Yes, for a chef as accomplished as yourself, getting to the finals should be a breeze. All this talk of cooking competitions is making Paimon hungry. Oh, Paimon can't wait! It'd be great if Paimon could take a nap and then wake up when it's the finals. You just don't want to do any work, Paimon. Hey, Xiangling! We're here! Hi! Traveler! Paimon! Did you hear the news? I made it through the selections for Masterful Chefs! Good job, Xiangling. Really? Woohoo! That's great! You're in a league of your own. <laughs> a total breeze. I wasn't even trying. Oh, but a true champion never rests on their laurels. I'm still gonna need your help to prepare for the competition. I made a few new test dishes and I was hoping everyone could try them and give some feedback. A traveler, you wanna be the first? No, oh, we just ate. We didn't really just eat though. <laughs> this time just to play it safe are you guys trying to stay away from her cooking because it's just that weird good idea okay let me think hmm. ah, let's get Beto to try it first nice let's go see Beto. Beto! yep you can definitely trust her opinion let's go find her right now she should be down at the docks let me box up this food real quick then we can head on down Express delivery for Miss Beto. <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Ah! <laughs> I'm so happy! <laughs> Do you know who that is, guys? Do you see her? Do you see who that is? Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I hope she stays a little longer than just to say hi. Beto, ahoy! Hey, look, who is she with? Hi, Beto. Hi, Xinyan. Are we interrupting anything? Chong Ling, <laughs> the woman of the hour. We were just talking about you. Oh, oh, Beta was saying you and I should get ourselves on board sometime. Says the whole crew's been asking for us. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we don't we don't need to know. Like you three go way back. Oh, we really do. Beto and Shinyan are two of my oldest customers, and I've helped out in the kitchen on board Beto's ship in the past. Recently, Shinyan's been planning to do a show on board too. That's the plan. Good music's meant for sharing. You guys should check it out sometime. Will do. But I came here today because I made it into the Masterful Chef's Finals. And I was just trying out some new dishes to bring to the competition. Can you have a little taste and give me some feedback? Sure. Beats drinking on an empty stomach. You know, it just occurred to me that with this quest, Shinyan technically got in before the whole year ended, I think. I think, at least for North American servers, Genshin Impact didn't start until October 5th. So, anyway. Well, about time. I'm starving over here. But let's see what you got. Oh, man. This chicken foo young's tasting awesome. Oh, this food is too good for me to be soaking up the alcohol with. <laughs> <laughs> These three seem to have a great time with each other. 
Those are the kind of friends you want in life, Paimon. Only thing is, you've got three dishes here. Chicken Fuyang, come and get it, and crystal shrimp, and they all taste kind of refreshing. Uh, is refreshing really a flavor? I mean, yeah, it's a good way to describe something that makes you feel, like, light, get up and go, energized, and also relaxed. When you spend all your time at sea, you don't have a lot of choice when it comes to food. Especially on the longer voyages, where you've got to stretch out your rations as far as you can. First thing you want to do when you get back on dry land is dig into a nice hot meal that's swimming in oil and has a ton of flavor. Yeah, it does surprise me that you want the rich, greasy, bold flavors. <laughs> Which I like those too, but... <laughs> that's the exact opposite of Ningguang's taste. You just now realize that these two are like complete opposites. Oh, sure is. Beidou's tastes are pretty similar to mine and Xiangling's. Ugh, Ningguang. I am sick of hearing that name. <laughs> Our tastes couldn't be more different. You'll never find us eating the same bowl of food. But last time when you were chatting with her, Paimon thought you two seemed to get along just fine. She was trying to make sure she didn't get another fine. You know? We're evenly matched. Guess that makes us equals. But I'm sorry, limp cabbage leaves are never gonna do it for me. <laughs> oh, I hear ya, I hear ya. Steamed cabbage and broth might be upper class and look fancy and all, but man, is it boring! It's never gonna give you that flavor explosion you get with some of the other dishes out there. Are you sure? Because cabbage and broth sounds amazing. Uh, have you guys? Oh my gosh, I must tell you, speak the word of my favorite dish. My lord and savior, whenever I get sick, is, um, basically it's rice porridge soup. But long story short, it's, uh, egg drop soup with steamed cabbage and rice. It's so good. It's the mo- so amazing. Chop bits of carrot, um, pork sausage, uh... I think that's about it. Maybe some green onion. It's so good. <laughs> so, Xinyan, are these dishes too mild for you too? A little bit of oyster sauce. Well, not so much mild. I just think you maybe missed a beat somewhere. Exactly. This is some fine cooking, no question about that. But if this is for a competition, it needs more... oomph. Coming from a girl who's got big boobs and thick thighs. It needs more oomph. Can, you got that? <laughs> Maybe it's missing meat. Meat? Oomph? Mm, are we sure these terms apply to cooking? Like, maybe beef is what she's talking about. Or pork. Hmm. Beet and oomph. Beet, yeah. You know what a beat is? I only know music, though. I'm nowhere near your level when it comes to cooking, so don't mind me if it doesn't make much sense. No, no, you're both completely right. Beat and oomph. That's what I need. I actually thought as much while I was cooking them. Even though this was a brand new combination, it still felt like I was missing that one thing that'll seal the deal. You know, really push it over the finish line. Seems like she's found her muse. Um, does that mean music theory is compatible with cooking? <laughs> I guess that means not at all, but every bit as compatible as we are, Paimon. Hey! Paimon didn't quite get the implication, but Paimon can tell when you're being a meanie! I'm sorry, Paimon. I love you. <laughs> okay, I think I know what I need to do. Great! So this went really well! Don't hold back. Just get out there and do your thing. You're a pro, Xiangling, and you've totally got this. Hands down, best chef in Liyue Harbor. Ain't that right, Beidou? Well, I think so, anyway. More than any other chef. And there ain't a whole lot of people I'd be willing to say that about. <laughs> I'll do my best. Thanks, everyone. All right, we'll leave you to it. I'm gonna take Xinyan on board for a while. Xiangling, they both had pretty strong tastes. You sure that won't be a problem? Shouldn't we get a second opinion from someone with milder tastes? That's a good point. 
Beto likes her greasy stir fries, and Xinyan can really handle her spice. Yeah, we should get another opinion. <laughs> now, who do we know whose tastes are on the mild side? Um, Traveler, any suggestions? You know, if we can find him, I have a certain person in mind. Who? 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 Oh, I wasn't the one I was thinking of. But yeah, if we can find him too. Yeah. Who? Oh, who is it? You're gonna like him. Someone you just missed last time we were there. Oh, we don't need to go to Wanshin? Really? Huh? Oh, Paimon remembers! He said that we just need to speak his name and poof, he'll show up. Convenient. Um, will he definitely hear us saying his name though? Maybe we should find somewhere quieter. <laughs> he doesn't like crowds either. Go to a more peaceful location. It's it's still on the docks. This isn't that peaceful. Whatever. <laughs> I only went like 30 feet. <laughs> okay, let's take turns shouting his name. Yeah, that's not weird. <laughs> Paimon, you don't need to yell it like that. <laughs> um, nothing's happening. Hmm, let me try again. Uh, that's weird. Does he not want to hang out with us? Oh, wait, so let me get this straight. Some guy with special powers promised you both that you just need to shout his name and he'll show up? Um, well, not both, actually. Just one of us. Yeah, I think Paimon misunderstood. I'm the one that's supposed to say it, and I don't really speak. <laughs> oh, right. Well, you should be the one to try it then. Paimon clearly just doesn't want to feel left out. You know, she's a lot like Tasty. <laughs> she wants to do the talking, and that's fine. <laughs> It's okay, Paimon. Uh, oh, I was really hoping Traveler would say something. Aw, I'm so sad. <laughs> Xiao, you there? You called? <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Goba's face. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, he actually came! You spoke my name, did you not? I didn't think it would actually work like that, and not that quick. <laughs> when I make you a promise, I will honor it. Blink of an eye and poof! He's there! That's how you know he's an Adeptus. An Adeptus? Oh, Xiao, was it? Hi there! It was me who asked the Traveler to call you here. My name's Xiangling. I'm a chef! Um, real fast, Xiangling, just so you know. He's a little mean, so don't get too offended if he bites. <laughs> I've made it into the finals of this year's Masterful Chefs, and I'm testing some dishes out in preparation. I'm trying to get feedback from customers with all different tastes. Customers. And that includes me? Uh-huh. The Traveler says you prefer mild food. Just the kind of person I'm looking for. If you don't mind, I'd like you to try the dishes I've made and tell me your thoughts. We value your opinion, sir. <laughs> I know you don't want to be here. But just hang out for a minute. It'll be fine. Since it's you, I will do it. Yay. Is it because you got a crush on me? It's because you got a crush on me, isn't it? Yay! Hmm. Um... Are you sure you can eat it? Don't force yourself. Tastes pretty good. Huh? Uh, really? I can't believe it. An Adeptus says he likes my cooking. If my dad was here, he'd be crying tears of joy. You make it sound like your dad's dead. <laughs> but yeah. 
It's good that an adept dislikes your cooking. You excel in the culinary arts. I'm reminded of another chef I know. Cloud retainer, maybe? That chef cooks dishes with soul, as do you. Both of you are masters of your craft. Uh, who do you think he means? Smiley Yansho? Eh, probably is Yansho. If I had to find fault with something, the two sides are a little strong for my taste. Some minor adjustments would take this dish from excellence to perfection. Just my own opinion. Do not fixate on it. Take it or leave it as you see fit. I, I like his attitude. He's like, it's just an opinion. You don't gotta think about it or overthink about it at all. It's just how I feel. <laughs> you asked my uh, piece, here's my piece. Alright, go easy on the sides. Okay, I got it. Thank you, Adeptus friend. It was really great to meet you. I'll be leaving now. Xiao, uh, I'm surprised you weren't mean to her at all. So thank you for your pleasant presence today. <laughs> See you next time. Paimon still can't believe he actually came! Right. So, what would happen if we called his name again now? <laughs> Do you think he'd come back right away? No, we're not doing it. <laughs> joking jeez <laughs> only kind of maybe not really joking <laughs> good news after two rounds of taste testing i've had an idea on what to do next great lucky we picked the right people to talk to i'd better head back and try this out a few times while it's fresh in my mind thanks for your help oh and the final is in Eugene terrace you better come and watch Will do! Good luck! You'll do great. <laughs> you bet! Wait for the competition. Alright guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you next episode. Bye bye